gather around, children. We're going to talk about video game addiction today. I'm going to tell you guys a quick little story. When I was about 15 to 16 years old, World of Warcraft came into existence. And you betcha, I was going to be there for the ride. Countless hours spent wandering the woods of Teldrassil, lost in imagination and wonder. Staying up until 4.35 a.m., just before my mom would wake up for work so I would have enough time to sneak up to my bed and act like I have been asleep the entire night. And then I would try to act sick in the morning when she would come into the room and try to have her let me stay at home. Once she was out the door, it became a full sprint back downstairs to the computer room. Life was good. It certainly was much more interesting than sitting in school learning about history portrayed in a way that suits the people who wrote history as opposed to the people who experienced it. Now somehow, I managed to keep good grades and keep my friendships alive. I basically played alone though at the time for I was one of the first of my friends to get the game. I didn't really feel lonely, I felt excited, and I felt alive. My grades were good, my friends were still cool, but the real problem began with my family, in particular, my mother. She learned quickly that pulling the power cord from my computer and hiding it was not a smart move. In particular, the eggs in her fridge and the pictures on the walls experienced my wrath as I went upstairs and started to shake the refrigerator violently and then began throwing toilet paper at the framed pictures on the walls. It's not funny. Well, it kind of is. Although I did not hurt anyone physically, and my life outside of my house was still good, and even I felt happy, the game was life and it was fun, but my mother was being hurt by my actions. I was disrespectful and had no regard and no time for doing any chores around the house. But I mean, come on, you gotta understand a little. Those 7 to 10 hour Alterac Valley games, I couldn't just leave the Alliance and make them fight without their best rogue. But guys, on a more serious note, you yourself know when you're happy or not. So always do what makes you happy. But if you're negatively affecting the important people around you or your personal health, then it might be time to reconsider your actions. Now before anyone gets offended, understand that I am a huge gamer myself, I'm very passionate about it. This channel in fact is based off of gaming. So instead of bashing gaming and bashing gamers, this video is going to focus on the positive things that gaming can bring to people, but we're also going to talk about where to draw the line and why. Welcome to Video Game Addiction. <laughs> Now, in my opinion, there is a difference between being obsessed with something and being addicted. Being obsessed is when you love something so much you can't stop thinking about it, and you just generally have an extreme passion towards it. Of course, there can be a bad side of obsession, but we're going to think about the positives in this way. It's this overwhelmingly satisfactory feeling you get constantly when you get to do or experience something that you really like. Now, addiction, of course, goes along with obsession, and you can be both, but I think where the line can be drawn is when you are addicted, you basically almost physically can't stop yourself from doing the things you are obsessed with. I feel like in my lifetime, I've been obsessed with many things. Video games, TV shows, sometimes even working out. I was also borderline addicted to golf before, but overall in my life, I have been able to stop myself from crossing into the addiction category most of the time. Of course, I have felt and been addicted to games before, like I told you with the story in the beginning, and I do regret some things, but I am fairly proud of myself for not letting that be my entire life. So video games are interesting. They do bring so many positive things to people's lives. When I am playing a game that I truly love, there is really no other feeling like it. While you are playing a game, you become immersed in it. You forget about all the shitty things going on in life. You just feel alive. I know for someone who doesn't play games, they can't really understand, but really, when playing games, you can feel like you are living the dream life that you always imagined. Now, of course, this is not real life, but it kinda is. You are experiencing real emotions and feelings that make you happy. What's not real about that? Video games also offer some people, like myself, a feeling of competitiveness, especially when playing competitive type games. This is an important feeling for many, especially as you get older and sports start to fade out of the equation. You find yourself getting the competitive feeling and satisfaction from some video games. And of course, look at them now, esports are a huge industry. Competitive gaming takes a lot of intelligence and eye-hand coordination, so if you are a pro, you're basically a badass. Where they differ from other sports is the physical aspect. You don't necessarily have to be physically fit to play good, but you do have to develop and have a lot of talent and skills in other areas. Gaming with my boys and trying to beat other random teams is fun and we all get so focused and want to win to show we are the better team. There's not many other places in life you can get that feeling when you enter your life stages into adulthood. 
One thing that people who don't play video games typically don't notice is that video games can in fact improve relationships. You become closer with your friends and you also are afforded opportunities to make new friends online. Half of my gamer buddies I didn't even know until playing games online, and the other half are friends that I grew up with or went to school with. We all live in different areas now and playing games at night together keeps our friendships alive and close. It's a lot of fun, and honestly, this happens to everyone in life. As you get older, friendships kind of fade just because we all get so busy, etc. But if you can play games with some of these friends at night, the friendship will never fade. It's a beautiful thing. If you are a solo gamer, that is fine too, but I do encourage you to reach out to old friends of yours that are passionate for games and see if you guys can start playing together. Also, don't be closed-minded to think that you can't make a real friend from a video game. Because remember, many of the people that you meet online are just like you. They share similar interests, etc. You can generally create a lot of new meaningful relationships from meeting friends online. It's not looked at as such a weird thing like it was back in the day. And not everyone online is a loser or a pedophile. I know many successful, even athletic people, including many celebrities, not that that really means anything, who play games, don't be ashamed in what you enjoy doing. So yeah, if you're playing games and you're getting a lot of satisfaction from them, who's to tell you that you're wasting your life? Because you're not, guys. Everyone enjoys different things in life. Playing games at night versus the person who watches Netflix or the person who spends their night tinkering with tools in the garage, it's all the same. We all enjoy different things, so don't judge other people for what they enjoy with their free time. The key here, though, is free time. What is free time? This is where the problem starts for many gamers. Free time should not be in the same category as going out to eat with your mother or father one night when they ask you. Free time should not include going to the gym or going for a run and staying healthy. Free time should not be hanging out with your friends in real life on a Friday night. It should not be visiting your grandma. It should not be going on a date night with your girlfriend. It should not be spending time with your kids. It should not even be mowing your lawn outside and taking care of your living space. All of those activities we think we do in our free time, but really guys, they are all things that need to be done in life. Therefore, they are not free time. So we're going to call those activities mandatory free time, which doesn't make sense, but I like it. When we group those things into the free time category, which is where video games are, we get them tangled with each other and certain areas start to break. This is not healthy and I promise you, you will not be happy. The shitty things that you want to escape from in life become shittier and ultimately it will explode in your face. Welcome to depression as a video game addict when you hit that stage. When your gaming negatively affects some of the important relationships that you have in life, you are addicted. Now everyone's going to have different amounts of free time available, we all live different lives. But I'm here to tell you that as long as you're not imposing on the mandatory free time category that we invented, you can absolutely spend all your free time playing video games. Forget anyone who judges you for that. For the people that typically judge you, more often times than not are just bored in their own lives and they're jealous that they do not have a passion for something like you do. Kind of sad man, I wish more people played games because I want more people to experience the amazing things that gaming can offer. So a quick summary of the things that are mandatory in life would be 1. Relationships If your gaming is negatively affecting your relationships in life, whether it's a girlfriend, wife, grandma, father, sister, or friends, it's time to draw the line. 2. Is health If you're not healthy and you're becoming unhealthy, it's time to draw the line. I am overall fairly fit, but lately I have been lazy and letting games take over some of my mandatory free time. And yeah, I'm not sad right now or anything, but I certainly will become sad over time if I keep this up. I'm drawing the line today actually and going back to the gym. I promise you guys, just going to the gym even for 30 minutes, three to four times a week will make your mental state so much better and you will ultimately get more enjoyment out of playing the games that you did before. Number three is personal matters. Your living space. Get out and mow the damn lawn, shovel the driveway, vacuum the rugs once in a while. Promise you just like going to the gym or going for a run, doing these things will make your life better and more enjoyable and ultimately make your gaming experience better as well. So figure out where you have to draw the line. We all stray from the path it's going to happen. I've done it many times, but overall, I am kind of proud of myself for staying in shape, retaining my relationships in life, just essentially taking care of my shit at the same time as being obsessed with video games. I feel happy and that's all that matters in life. You've got the passion category checked with your gaming, but make sure you guys have all the other categories checked as well. Now of course you can be the opposite of this, and many people are. They have their life intact, relationships, health, money, etc. They have no passions really to spend their free time on. This is almost just as bad as being addicted to things. What's the point of life when you don't really have passions and things that you enjoy doing? 
I know it might be hard to cut your gaming nights down from maybe five to three hours, but guys, it's worth it if you need that extra time to take care of the mandatory things like relationships, health, and personal matters. I have trained myself to get into the habit of when I'm asked to do something important with family or friends or my girlfriend, I just say yes right away and gaming goes to the back of my mind for that time being. I still have plenty of nights and weekends where I can spend all night playing, but I have achieved some sort of balance and it's so important. So what do you guys think about video game addiction and what are some of your experiences with it, whether with yourself or others around you? I think most of you guys watching this video are very passionate about video games. So achieve that balance, guys, and your gaming life will be much better. Thanks so much for gathering around the fire and hanging out with me in this video. I know the video wasn't really funny. It wasn't really supposed to be funny. I just kind of felt like talking about my experience with video games and what led me to being able to experience gaming in a way that I really love as well as stay happy in life. It's really hard to achieve that balance because games can be addicting and they just want to pull you in and pull all your time in. But look for the balance, guys. Look at what is mandatory in your life and make sure you take care of those things and spend the rest of your time having a great time in whatever game you like to play. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I do many types of videos on this channel, ranging from comedy videos to game reviews to tutorials, and I also do live streams. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.